Before that, a very personal insight into a miscarriage of justice which was a landmark moment here in Britain. This is the case of the so-called Birmingham Six. They'd been wrongly convicted of carrying out two bombings in the city in 1974 in which 21 people were killed and more than 180 injured. The attacks were blamed on the Irish Republican Army as part of their campaign to end British rule in Northern Ireland. The six men arrested and tried were all of Irish descent. But it wasn't until 16 years later that their convictions were quashed and they were set free as a result of a long campaign originally started by their families. Luis Hidalgo reports. On the 14th of March 1991, six men walked out of the Old Bailey Criminal Court in London and held their arms up high in victory. After 16 years in prison for a crime they didn't commit, the men who'd become known as the Birmingham Six were free. It's good to see you all. We waited a long time for this. 16 years because of hypocrisy, brutality. Watching in court that day was Breda Power, the oldest daughter of one of the six, William Power, known as Billy. I remember being in the public gallery and the judge just saying, your appeals are allowed. And I remember the silence because that kind of news can be quite difficult to take in. And I remember the judge looked up and he looked irritated and he said, your appeals are allowed, you're free to go. And I just remember an almighty eruption in the court the solicitors and barristers and even the media jumping up and down and hugging each other. And I remember saying to myself, calm down, savour the moment. Well, farewell, the streets of sorrow. And farewell, you streets of pain. Breda Power had been eight years old when her father was arrested. By the time he was released, she'd had her first child and had been part of the long campaign to get him freed. It's such a huge part of your life. You know, part of you wants to put it behind you and let go, but, you know, it defines who you are and it's all you knew from eight years old up until your mid-twenties. And in the dark under streets the pain it all went black and there was a big no just it was massive noise and I started screaming and we people heard people screaming and then we just went for the back door. On November the 21st, 1974, two bombs ripped through two Birmingham pubs within minutes of each other, killing 21 people and injuring 182 others. Glass is flying, chairs flying, plaster coming down, people roaring, it's terrible really. They were horrific and you could feel the tension. We lived in a close or a crescent and everybody was talking about the bombs. Suspicion quickly turned to the Provisional Irish Republican Army, or IRA, which just the previous year had extended its bombing campaign to the British mainland to try to force Britain out of Northern Ireland. Breda's parents had moved to Birmingham from Belfast in the 60s. On the day of the bombings, Breeders' father Billy and four of his friends, who were also from Northern Ireland, had left Birmingham by train to go to Belfast for a funeral. Breeders' mother, Nora, wouldn't know this for two more days, but the day after the bombings, on the Friday, Billy Power and his four friends were arrested while waiting for the ferry, and so was a sixth man who'd seen them off in Birmingham. Our house was raided by the police on the Friday night. And my mum just thought that all Irish houses must be being raided at that time. And how did she find out? On Sunday night, we were sitting in the lounge. We'd had our baths, three girls. We all had very long hair and it was washed, ready for school Monday morning. And I think we were waiting for Planet of the Apes. <laughs> it was coming on after the news. So all I remember is as my mum came out of the kitchen into the living room, a picture flashed up on the TV, a picture of the six men, and I just remember her dropping the tray and literally running out of the house. Breeders' immediate thought was that her father had died in the bombing. In those days, no-one thought to tell children what was going on. The Powers had four children. The youngest was just two, and a neighbour looked after them while her mother went to the police station. The next day, an uncle came and put Breda and her sister on a plane to Ireland, to her mother's sister, where they'd stay for the next few months. And there, Breda says, they were kept away from the other children. 
We didn't even see hardly anything of our cousins. And my sister also pointed out that when we were in school, we didn't go out. But you didn't go out to play with the others? No, no. Why do you think that was, Brida? It's, it, I don't know. Do you think it's because people thought your father had done it? Or maybe they didn't know. They didn't know anything. And I think sometimes that's worse. Brida herself didn't know and wouldn't know for months what had happened to her father. We were told at some stage that our dad was in hospital. And how did you find out? Can you remember? Yeah. We went on a first prison visit and, bless my mum, I could read HM Prison. And I remember feeling really shocked but not feeling able to kind of have it out with my mum because I knew that she had been going through such a rough time. She'd lost loads of weight. She was only 29. Breda remembers the sadness in her father's eyes on that first visit, but she says throughout the 16 and a half years that he was in prison, whenever they visited, her father was always smiling and positive to protect them. Presumably it was a little while longer before you realised what he was accused of. And of course by that time, because of the beatings that they received, several of them, including your father, had confessed, in inverted commas. I remember getting to about 14 and my mum gave me all the legal paperwork that she had in boxes. That was the first time that I actually learned that my dad had signed a confession. Can you remember how you felt when you found that out? Oh, I was shocked. I was absolutely shocked. Words are easy, you know, someone got beaten up. But if you actually see the person with their injuries and read their statement on what happened to them, that's when it really sunk in. And reading what had happened on the night of the bombs, all those people that were killed and people that were maimed and injured, it was kind of like, oh, my goodness, this is happening to somebody else. And I remember thinking that's how I'm going to deal with this, as though it's happening to somebody else. In August 1975, Billy Power, Paddy Hill, Jerry Hunter, Johnny Walker, Hugh Callahan, and Richard McElkenny received 21 life sentences, one for each of the people killed in the bombing. But even during the trial, there were already doubts about the credibility of the forensic evidence and the confessions. Breda's mother, meanwhile, had moved the family to London. It was easier to be anonymous there. Other kids just assumed you didn't have a dad because your dad was dead. And we used to let them just assume that. Birthdays, Christmases, New Year was always particularly difficult. Breda left school when she was 16. By 18, she joined the increasingly high-profile campaign to get the men's convictions overturned. An appeal in 1987 was refused, but Breda says it was a turning point. The world's media were on our side from that day forward. We'd gone from six wives knocking on the doors of their local MPs begging for help to the primate of all Ireland and MPs like Jeremy Corbyn on the left and Sir John Farr on the right visiting the men. So you had that feeling that, you know, they can't keep them in forever. They didn't. Four years later, the Birmingham Six were free. Their case was followed by the overturning of several other miscarriages of justice. Those first years, Breda says, were euphoric. But as the years passed, it was difficult to rebuild their lives. If it's all you've known, it takes a long time and probably will take a few generations before all the healing is complete. You know, we're still working on it. We're still all trying. 25 years on, no one has been convicted for the Birmingham bombings. Breda Power still lives in London and today works on behalf of Irish prisoners held in British prisons.